Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for watching this video. First of all, I'm grateful to Allah uh, for this amazing experience. Just uh, applying to uh, Ihsan Tank and getting to stage six, the final, was amazing. And the whole uh, experience and, and just pitching, um, it was incredible. And um, I've got a few, you know, gems I want to share with you. I'm gonna, uh, I want to share uh, how I believe the key, the key reasons for how I managed to get this investment. And um, also, which which is going to be inshallah, applicable to you, even whether you're pitching for business, outside of business, uh, some really important lessons. And I'm going to uh, give a few uh, really um, uh, juicy offers, inshallah, just to kind of celebrate and show my shukr, inshallah. Allah says in the Quran, And as for the blessings of your Lord, proclaim them. Okay, but not with the intention of showing off, but with the, to, to, to show your gratitude to Allah. And so I can share that, you know, when you are sincere and you put some effort in, success can come your way so just to uh, put it back into perspective uh what is this this is like a muslim dragon's den where they allowed the people to apply um it was called ihsan tank uh, organized by brother akib ahmed and, and brother shahid um uh, who opened this up for muslims around the world to apply and the winner can then pitch to uh try to secure investment into their business right so i was up against around 225 other applicants was a stage one initial application online then the stage two a little bit more detail stage three we had to put a video pitch in stage four we had to answer all these questions uh stage five um i can't even remember what stage five was now right and, and then stage six was a pitch to the pioneers right so it's quite a grueling process there's lots of stages and okay these are my five big lessons right for anyone to learn and, and then what the outcome alhamdulillah on the day on the pitch the really some incredible ideas there other great entrepreneurs i'm really humbled by the khidmah and, and the service of, of of what muslims are doing out there um and the different investments given sometimes two thousand was given five thousand given and alhamdulillah i was able to secure the highest amount of, of forty thousand pounds um one of the reasons is that my business alhamdulillah, has been established for for several years i was actually going for a hundred k um didn't get quite what i wanted but I'm, I'm more than happy because with the objections of the dragons, the 40K will help me, inshallah, pump it into the business to try and get it to that next level, inshallah. So let me tell you what my five secrets are, okay? Number one is very simple, to be proactive. Proactive and to just go for it, to shoot a little bit above your weight, right? Now, by the way, I've got some of these uh, these secrets I've posted on Facebook and LinkedIn, but in this video, I'm going a little bit deeper, okay? So I hope you enjoy this. So number one is to be proactive. So when... um. The application came right. It was a little bit. It felt a bit, um, uh, you know, short notice for me. I, I maybe I heard about it um, late, but there's only like a kind of few days left uh, to submit, and I could have thought, well, you know what, don't have time. Or, but I looked at the application. And normally, you look at these competitions. That it doesn't take that long. The initial thing, you just fill in a form. Now, even to get a halal mortgage application, right? It, it, you know, to get a decision principle, it doesn't take long at all. It takes minutes, right? So, especially in the modern era, when everything's made quick and easy for us. Just go for it, right? And I know for a fact, right, there are other competitors I have, other entrepreneurs who are more experienced than me, who have got much better business uh, ideas probably than me, more intelligent than me. They, you know, I'm so thankful that they didn't pitch, right? Because I don't think I would have done as well if they did, right? And the only reason that I got ahead and they didn't is that I entered, right? Some people didn't enter. Maybe they were scared. Maybe they weren't proactive enough, right? For whatever reason, you've got to be in the game if you want to win the game. If you're not in the game, you can't win. The worst thing you can do is get out, right? Get, get, you know, get knocked out. But you have to be in the game first. It sounds obvious, but that's the first thing. Be be brave, be courageous, get in the arena, okay? Number two, uh, it's a weird one, follow the rules. Now, what do I mean by follow the rules, right? I'm going to give you some like an inside, inside here. Like I, I've been an, uh, an English teacher for 15 years. Right, form teacher, teaching students, right up from you know high school GCSEs up to A levels, IB, and Subhanallah, every teacher will tell you the same thing. Right, when it comes to exams, you always have to remind students answer the question, right, and and for when you're entering a competition, follow the rules. Now, what do I mean by that? You might think that's obvious, right? It's not. You would be surprised. I remember tutoring a genius guy, you know, someone who's like you think this guy's going to be a cabinet minister when he grows up, right? So smart, right? But sometimes we get tunnel vision and sometimes we just lack that that conscientiousness, that meticulousness, that fastidiousness, right? Um, fastidious means when you're just really fussy about the details, okay? And so you have to be like that with an exam. So I had a literature student, you know, you have mice and men, you have all the different books. And then in, in, you know, later words, I said, how did you do? I've been tutoring for like uh, six months. He said, Alhamdulillah, I did well with the English language. I got an A. 
but on literature i got like a cd or you know i'm like what are you brilliant to literature he said oh i answered the wrong question he'd studied one book let's say of mice and men but he went and answered the question on a different book which he'd never even read <laughs> how crazy is that right and on the pitch for the pioneers um it, you know there were some people who didn't know their numbers right the uh, they were told look make sure you say what the investment uh, amount you're seeking let make make sure you know what the um uh what what, what you're going to be um offering to the investor in terms of a share and um many many some of the pictures they didn't do that they didn't even do that properly right so you have to know the rules you have to follow that meticulously otherwise you're just gonna you know frankly you're gonna you're gonna um you know pee them off right they're gonna get annoyed okay so you've got to follow the rules and to the point, right, I, I I was close to getting knocked out because I thought this was more like The Apprentice where I got in my head somewhere that oh, it's a 250K investment and that's what you're aiming for. We're all aiming for it and one winner. And I was wrong. It was actually not necessarily 200. It's more like 100K max. And that's going to be the, the, the pioneers are going to just decide on every single pitch. And just like Dragon's Den, it's more like Dragon's Den. Whereas you're going to like, yep, um, if it's good, we'll invest. And how much we invest depends on, on the pitch. So it's a completely different ball game, different rules. And I had, I'm had i an Apprentice fan, right? I've never really watched the Dragon's Den that much. So what did I do? I swatted up and I watched a lot of Dragon's Den before the pitch. And I know for a fact many of the uh, other pitchers, not many, but some of them hadn't done that because you could tell the way they were pitching, they weren't doing it um, in, 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 in the right manner, right? And for just by watching the show, that helped me a lot um, create a nice, concise pitch, right? Which leads me to number three, which is to, you know, to really um, do a nice, concise, clear presentation, thinking about what the investors want, not focusing too much on you, right? So it's easy to kind of talk about your accolades, talk about, you know, what you've achieved. I'll be honest with you. I thought that the, 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 the investors were going to be a little bit more, the dragons were going to be a bit more, you know, praise me a little bit for my achievements and this, but, and it was boom, boom. They were just crushing me on my numbers, really uh, interrogating me, right? So you've got to anticipate um, you know, you got to make your presentation mainly about what they want. So what I did, I kind of was thinking, look, if I'm asking for 100K, I need to justify that from their perspective. If I was in their shoes, put yourself in their shoes. They're going to know, well, where is this money going to go? And how is this going to make them money? And to be honest with you, I think I did the first stage quite well. I think I outlay, outlined where I'm going to put that money. But what I didn't do, which the dragons started quizzing me upon, was like, how was that going to get the money? And how is that going to get the money fast? Right. And so you can't anticipate everything, but you've got to do your research. Right. You've got to like really think in terms of how, what they want and make it concise. Don't talk too long about the stuff which is, they're not interested. In. Don't talk about your bio. Don't talk about yourself too much because you want to have got to the final if, if that wasn't that good. But focus mainly on what is it that they want. OK. Number four. Um, yeah. Anticipate and prepare for their objections. So you need to know the strengths and weaknesses of your pitch and of your company. Right. So I had strengths. Right. Which were that I had. Um, uh, you know, had a good track record. That was my big, big strengths. So you want to maximize that. Um, but then, you know, what are your weaknesses? And so, you know, the you've got to anticipate what they're going to be asking you. And luckily in the previous stages, there's clues. Normally there's clues in the previous stages. Previous stages, they had already asked me these questions, some objections. So I knew that they were going to hone in on those. And and to be fair to the, to, to, in the process, they actually gave you some prep. They actually said, um, talk in your pitch, make sure you address these concerns. So, you know, if they're helping you like that, take that help and make sure you really, really prepare for that. And to be honest with you, I, even I got surprised. I was a little bit overconfident at a point because I did not anticipate because I knew my business had done well and earned a lot of revenue. But when they started quizzing me on my cash flow, I was a little bit, whoa, right? And so sometimes your strength, a good dragon will make it a weakness. So I was like, you know, I've, I've achieved great revenue. They said, well, why do you need us? You know, why didn't you invest in yourself? Because that was a good question. And then I had to say, well, my cash flow wasn't great. And they said, oh, well, if your cash flow is not great, then, you know, then what your projection is for your profits, that's not good either then. We, we you know, so that was, that was tough. And you have to be ready to uh, anticipate the objections. So because I had anticipated about 90% of the objections, the 10%, which did shock me a little bit, I'll be honest, I was nervous. I was able to pivot I was able to stay calm. I was, and, and, and then this final piece of the jigsaw is what really helped me and saved me in the end, right? The fifth thing, and this is the most important, is to cultivate and leverage your network, right? So over the last three years, right, the one thing I've done, which I think is different to most coaches, most beginner coaches, is I've invested like crazy in myself, right? I've invested 
in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven programs, right? Around 20K in business and personal development programs every single year, right? I, develop, uh, I invested in business coaching or marketing coaching, if you like, but also like in high performance coaching, right? If you want to be a productivity coach, you need to invest in the best productivity programs, right? If you want to be a brilliant health coach, you yourself have to first invest in the best health programs, right? Don't expect people to pay you if you're not willing to pay others, right? So that's part of the process and it's part of the investment of being a great entrepreneur. And every, you know, I've got most of my network are much higher, much more successful than me. And that's what I've noticed with all of them. They invest so much in themselves, okay? And so, um, and, and, and but the, the learning point isn't just that. Even if you're not a professional, the point is your network. So I've worked with these different coaches. Some of the, I've worked with different service providers. They're all been brilliant. And the thing is, for example, someone I worked with in 2020, it didn't work out. They tried to create something for me. It didn't work, but they were really good people. I kept in touch with them. And subhanAllah, uh, I, uh, you know, yes, uh, this weekend, I leveraged all their help. So these seven figure, six figure, eight figure entrepreneurs, I messaged them. I asked them questions. I asked them questions about the process. I asked them questions like what's a good share to ask for, right? And because I'd asked all these questions, because I compiled all this research before the before the event, on the I was able to kind of, you know, I was able to pivot, I was able to negotiate and and get a great deal, you know, by the end of it, Alhamdulillah, which we're both happy with, right? So I cannot stress that enough. Um, you know, afterwards I was, I was giving shock and I thought, subhanAllah, all these people who helped me. You know, imagine if I'd kind of, you know, some of them I'd even had, um, you know, arguments with, right? Um, uh, and, and I hadn't even seen eye to eye, but yet they were pivotal for me to get the investment. And so don't burn bridges. When you meet brilliant people, even if you don't agree with them, keep good relations, keep nurturing them, keep in touch, right? Even if it's just WhatsApp, many of my connections just through WhatsApp, I just keep in touch. And subhanAllah, you never know when they're going to help you. So final thing. I'm going to be giving some, um, uh, you know, some exciting offers as a result of this. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm going to give a big, big discount this week for any kind of Ramadan courses. I've got a few Ramadan courses. But the second thing is, you know, one thing I've not revealed uh, on social media is one of the other finalists, right, uh, is actually one of my clients. And I actually helped that person um, uh, get to the point where they could pitch by, you know, through my coaching, pushing them to kind of um, uh, get their idea, get their vision and, and really make progress on it, Right. And many of you know Tamit Tanim Zaman and the, the huge success in his rent to rent business. Uh, again, part of his success is because working with me as his uh, productivity, his high performance coach, I pushed him to focus and to, and, to, and to work on that. And Alhamdulillah, to this day, he still attributes a lot of his success to having this coaching with me. And I'm still coaching him to this day. So my invitation to you is that if you've got a dream, if you've got a vision and you're living as a shadow behind yourself, and you would like me to help you to push you to the you know to the upper limits of what you can achieve well then just send me a message let me reply to this uh, with an email and we can talk about next steps to see if it makes sense uh, to consider you working with me inshallah all right i hope this was really useful jazakallah khairan uh, do reply the emails with your favorite insights uh, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh